In this lesson, I'm going to be teaching you guys how to use the debugger in Microsoft Visual Studio. I think this is a very important skill to be able to develop early on because it's going to allow you to be able to step through your code. So like when you're running your program and your variables are coming out with just weird results, you don't really know what's going on. You can go ahead and hand trace your code to be able to see what steps or what variables are initializing to what values at like different steps. But you can do this in the debugger and it's a lot easier. It's all uh, automated and everything. And it's just a lot more simple to be able to use a debugger that's built right into the IDE itself. <clears throat> and it's going to save you a lot of time debugging your code trying to, instead of hand, trying to hand trace it the whole time. So just have some boilerplate. Uh, code here for this program. This is going to be a real simple program. So what I just have here is iOS stream and uh, include iOS stream include string using namespace std. And then instead of system pause, like what most of you are probably doing, if you are a beginner, I uh, can't type today. So instead of that, this will do the exact same thing as this does essentially, but this is kind of frowned upon. So I just kind of implement my own way of doing it. It does essentially the exact same thing. And then another quick thing, you may not have these line numbers here, but it is very helpful. So in order to get that, you're going to want to go to tools, options, and scroll up to the top. We are going to be under the text editor tab, so open that one, and then under the all languages tab, and line numbers. Make sure that is checked, and then click OK, and you should see these beautiful line numbers here. <coughs> Alright, so let's make this simple program here. First, I'm going to call an int, and say my age. Well, first off, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create an integer called my age and a string called my birthday. And then I'm also going to create another string called today. And I'm going to initialize both the strings for different dates. And then I'll create an if, uh, an if loop, if statement rather. And I'm going to say if today equals my birthday, then add one to my age. Because on your birthday, you add one to your age, right? So let's go ahead and create that. My age equal... Uh, int my age equals 24 then I'll say string my birthday equals June 16 and now I'm going to create another string called today and we will set this to June 15 alright <laughs> so now let's create our if statement to check if today is my birthday so if today is equal to my birthday, remember when you're comparing two values, you need to use the double equal because one equal just means a sign. So when you're comparing two of them, you need to use the double equal. So if today equals my birthday, then eight, my age equals my age plus one. Or we can use the increment operator, which will do the exact same thing. So I'm going to comment this out and use the built-in operator, my age plus plus. Both these statements, again, are the same exact thing. They just add one to the current value of whatever my age happens to be. And now I'm going to see out my age. <clears throat> so now I'm going to create what's called a breakpoint. And a breakpoint just kind of as it sounds, it's going to break the program at that spot. It's going to pause the program at that spot, rather. So in order to create a breakpoint, just click on this gray bar at whatever line that you want, which is another reason why these line numbers come very in handy. If you accidentally create a breakpoint you don't want, just right-click one and hit delete breakpoint. Right-click and delete breakpoint. I only want on line 8, so it pauses right before it executes this line int my age equals 24. So now let's run the program and we'll see what the debugger looks like. So you click run and now we see this arrow here to tell us what line 
we are on, what line we are about to execute. It hasn't executed it yet. As soon as I click one of these three options up here, then it will execute it. So it says locals right here. Oh, I don't want to do that. Put him back down there. There we go. So it says locals right here. Yours may say autos and to change it to locals. Just click that little bread come, breadcrumb tab right there. <laughs> and then we will see the different variables that we have down here. Right now they are filled with uh, garbage data because they haven't been initialized yet. As soon as we step over this execution, this statement right here, then my age will be initialized to 24. I'll have the value of 24. So we will step over right here. You can either press F10 or click this button here. And now we will step over this line. We can see that our arrow moved to the next line. So we stepped over this one. We initialized, we executed that line, and we can see that it actually did execute because my age now has the value 24. And if we hover over my age, it'll show us right here also that it currently equals 24. So now my birthday, we can hover over that. It currently equals nothing. We can also see down here, it currently equals nothing, just garbage data. As soon as I step over it, now it's initialized to June 16th. Same thing with, and we can hover over now, it says June 16th. Same thing with today, step over, and now today equals June 15. It shows up down here. So now we're going to test if today, June 15, is equal to my birthday, June 16, then execute this line. But obviously it doesn't, so when I click step over, it should not go inside of this if loop, or this if statement, because today does not equal my birthday. So when I step over it, then it completely skips this whole thing because this condition was not met as true. So now it's going to see out my age, which should say 24 to the console once I execute that line by stepping over it. So step over, and we can go to our console, and we see that indeed it does say 24. So I'm just going to stop that program there because this stuff just ends the program. I'm sure you guys know what ending a program may look like. So now let's change the program up a bit. Now we're going to say June 15th has ended. Today is now June 16th. So I will say today equals June 16th. So now let's run the program again. I still have my breakpoint here, so it's going to pause the program right before executing that line. So we see all the data, the garbage data again. We already know what happened, so step over that. We see we got initialized there. Step over my birthday. My birthday was initialized, and then step over today, and today was initialized. So now we see that today equals June 15, as well as today equals June 15 here. Although it says June 16, remember again, we are paused on this line, meaning it has not executed this line yet. So right now, we see that today does not equal June, or today equals June 15, and my birthday equals June 16. So let's execute over this line, and now we see today equals June 16. So now if I hover over June 16, and my birthday equals June 16, so now, since this condition is met true, now when we step over it, we should be inside of the if statement. So I'll step over, and sure enough, now we are on line 18, when in the previous program it skipped over this line. So now my age currently equals 24, because I have not executed this line yet. Once I step over, now my age equals 25. You can see it's highlighted in red here, meaning that I did update that variable. And now we will see out to the console 25 as soon as I step over that statement. I stepped over it, and it uh, displayed to the console 25. So that's essentially the most basic way of using the debugger. Start getting used to it, because it's going to 
definitely help you become a better programmer. It's going to speed up your debugging time, and it's going to make your life so much more simpler. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Please leave any comments to help me uh, improve it later on, and good luck.